Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, today, uh, Ristream Collaborative and Collider will be jointly presenting on a panel to talk through some lessons learned in the insurance industry. Um, or Ristream, uh, you'll get to meet Pat and we'll talk a little bit more about what they do and um, some of the industry learnings. And Collider will talk about some of the blockchain and technology learnings. So uh, just to start with the speaker intro, Pat, if you'd like to start and say a few words about your background. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm Pat Schmid. I'm the vice president of the Institute's Risk Stream Collaborative, which is a risk management and insurance blockchain consortium. I oversee Risk Stream's core business, including our products, our relationship management, our operations, and our technology departments. And through these lenses, I work with our team to coordinate the risk stream consortium of insurers, brokers, and reinsurers, and work with staff members and technical partners such as Clido in developing um, production ready applications that can lower costs, improve the insurance experience, experience, and hopefully drive efficiency across the industry. Thanks, Pat. We're really happy to have you here today. Steve? I'm uh, Steve Serving. Uh, great to be with you today to be talking about blockchain and insurance. Um, uh, I'm the CEO of Collido. I'm joined by uh, my fellow co founder, Sophia. So, always great to be tag teaming with you. Um, and Collido is a, a technology uh, vendor in the blockchain space um, that's really specialized on enterprise grade. Um, SaaS solutions, hosting of node infrastructure, and, and other off-chain components that enterprises need to, to really uh, build and, and deploy uh, the sort of solutions like what we're going to be talking about in just a minute. Thanks, Steve. I um, think just a little bit to, <coughs> sorry, to add about our backgrounds. Um, we have been in enterprise blockchain space um, from the very beginning. Um, Steve launched one of the, the world's first blockchain as a service uh, platform and uh, would work with hundreds of clients, um, had executive ownership of um, some significant <coughs> advances in the space from uh, some of the leading vendors. So I think just in terms of what we're looking to accomplish in the panel, um, <clears throat> some of the industry's best practices, lessons learned from the insurance industry across uh, years of consortium building and governance and getting into some of the architectures and management and operation as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Pat, who's going to kick it off with a, a view on the insurance industry drivers and um, talk about the stream collaborative and what they've been doing in the space. Sure. Um, so th thanks again for having me. Um, it, it's our opinion at the institutes. We feel that the technology behind blockchain and dis a distributed ledger is network driven. Enterprise usage of this provides a means to work on shared business processes or multi business multi party business processes and challenges associated that in, in our industry plague the ins insurance industry and add cost. But it also, in our opinion requires for competitors to get together requires a nonpartisan Switzerland type arbiter uh, to kind of bring the industry together to test and learn and about the technology and implement it. So the Institute's risk stream collaborative emerged out of the Institute's, which is a not for profit educational entity. It was formed over a hundred years ago out of the Wharton school and it's more than 100,000 learners annually on generally on risk management insurance topics. Its board of directors include chief executive officers who represent a majority of domestic insurance premium volume in PNC um, and whose organizations also have a sizable international presence. So if you need a network for private permissioned or enterprise blockchain, the institutes already has one established within the PNC space. So to establish the same type of arrangement in the life and annuities insurance area, uh, the risk management um, or the risk stream collaborative teamed up with an organization called LIMRA, a risk management um, research and professional development trade association for the financial services industry. 
the Ristream Collaborative is the largest, which formed out of the institutes, is the largest insurance blockchain consortium with over 30 member companies and a broader emerging ecosystem. Our members include well-known insurers like Travelers, Liberty Mutual, Nationwide, USAA, Securian, um, brokers. Um, I think we have a slide on this too. Brokers like Marsh, Truist, um, and reinsurers like Everestry and Renry. I think we have a slide on this, Sophia, um, if, if, if we advance forward. So if, if just, just re backtracking for just a second, we're the largest blockchain consortium with over 30 member companies and a broader emerging ecosystem. Again, our members include well-known entities like Travelers, Liberty Mutual, Nationwide, USAA, Securian, brokers like Marsh, Truist, Aon, and reinsurers like Everestry, Renry. We are a separate 501c6 not-for-profit that has been working on blockchain and DLT application for the last few years. Today, we operate as a consortium that is using this network of member companies to develop industry-specific blockchain applications. And our goal is to develop these applications for a variety of use cases across the industry. So while our activity uh, for the consortium really began in the property casualty insurance space with kind of the institutes as uh, the sponsor, the life and annuities industry is starting to catch up as well. Risk stream membership, which are carriers, distributors, or reinsurers, they pretty much lead all areas of our consortium's governance and activity. For example, the membership uh, or the members and, and leadership work to prioritize use cases and launch working groups on those use cases. These groups in turn design use cases and then work with staff and folks like Kaleido to build out the associated applications. So while all of the, our efforts at RiskStream have really centered around our membership, the consortium, as demonstrated on this slide, has started to create a larger ecosystem. And our goal is to position providers, you know, builders, connectors, or, or enablers, not-for-profits, which we just to describe as kind of associations, consortia, or academia, um, collaborators, which could be any entity that touches the insurance space. And when you think about that, that's an awful lot of industries that really touch the insurance space. And then we, we define these as civics, which are basically uh, regulators, departments of insurance and, and government. And our hope there is to really start to establish um, an ecosystem. So it, that goal is to position those parties um, to help consortium members devise solutions and shared business processes across shared business processes within the risk management insurance space. So finally, our use cases are are, are, or decentralized applications for blockchain really stretch across a variety of areas of insurance. For example, we have use cases in personal auto for proof of insurance verification and first notice of loss data sharing. Cases in commercial lines, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, on certificates of insurance for verification, surety bonds for power of attorney verification. We have use cases in reinsurance for placement and border reporting. And finally, uh, we'll focus a little bit on life and annuities use cases like mortality monitor, which looks into sharing of certain information related to policyholders who have passed away and uh, licensing and appointments. Um, you can kind of get a, a, a good view of our, our ecosystem from this slide and how all the different in, uh, parties are really interacting with, the, with one another. This goes kind of hand in hand with the previous slide. If we advance down to the next slide though, I think we've been on quite a journey um, within Riststream. We worked with a variety of different solution pro providers across our journey, which started uh, really in, I think actually late 2016, we became founding members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance at the time. Uh, we worked with consensus and building out four proof of concepts initially. We went back to that board again the board of the institutes at the time, which is comprised of about 40 to 50 CEOs rep representing a large percentage of the insurance industry. And they came back and they said, OK, build these four proof of concepts, but also show us that the industry even wants to work together on this. And we demonstrated that we moved forward. 
and developed a platform which we called Canopy 1.0, which is a private permissioned version of Ethereum. We did so with Deloitte, built out a few applications there. We extended that further, started building out what we call Canopy 2.0, um, which was built around Corda. We worked with Accenture, Deloitte, and Ernst & Young on a variety of elements related to that. But all along, we had a vision of a blockchain interoperable structure that we could leverage as an industry. And around this time, we really um, met Kaleido and we recognized the fact that they were building or had built something that we were aiming to build. And therefore, we started to team up on something we call Canopy 3. And we're really excited about it because we feel it fulfills our vision for blockchain within insurance. It providing a low cost method that's truly underlying blockchain agnostic to enterprise blockchain. Uh, Canopy was created to provide a backbone for various blockchain or DLT apps in insurance to, to be built upon. It allows for efficient build, easy stand up of new apps using simple APIs. Um, it's SOC 2 certified, ISO certified. We've worked with our members to go through SIG processes, and we're excited to say that our platform is, is certified. We've also become much more efficient at standing up nodes. They're now click button and now have a hosted node option. And as we've highlighted, uh, Kaleido's platform is platform agnostic. So it's potentially possible to build applications on Corda, Ethereum, and of course now Hyperledger. So we're super excited about that because a lot of industry initiatives have been built on separate different types of blockchains and we wanna bring them together. So we're, work, we're very excited about the potential even down the road for our industry members to build their own use case. So it's been a great uh, teamwork uh, getting to this point. And now I think the last slide that we have here on my side before I hand it over to Sophia and Steve is that we, we are building applications across insurance. And this slide gives you a good perspective on that. In personal auto, you know, one of the first things that we're all familiar with is when we're stopped um, by a law enforcement officer or we're involved in an accident, we pull out our paper card. And we all know that there, now insurers have uh, the ability to use applications to showcase that you you know you're, you're, you have proof of insurance. The problem with that is it's not up to date. And there's no way to transmit that to another party. We've built out a ability for us to transmit after an accident between different parties on our network. So for example, if USAA, enters into their mobile application and nationwide enters into theirs, there's a potential to transmit and verify insurance coverage on the spot, not only peer to peer, but also peer to a law enforcement officer and so on. We've also built out a first notice of loss data sharing application, which allows our member companies, once they get uh, notified of an accident, to enter into their existing claim system, which we're using, using Guidewire as an example here. And register that, share via the, the blockchain, uh, the DLT, who that other carrier is. So for example, if it comes in to, um, I don't know, USAA, and they enter it into their guide wire system, it could, and the other party involved was nationwide, it literally will populate in the nationwide claim system. And there's reconciliation back and forth between the two parties, therefore cutting down on the time spent on the phone between the different parties, trying to get more information on the claim. We've also built out applications in the commercial line space, and I'll, I'll run through this very quickly. Surety Bonds, which is an international effort on power of attorney verification, is probably the lead there. Um, in reinsurance, we're looking into border row reporting and placement. And life and annuities, we work closely with Kaleido on a project called the Mortality Monitor, which allows for carriers to share information on a policyholder who's passed away amongst one another. And we found with only three carriers, 4% of the time, there is overlap in a policyholder who may have had an annuity with someone like Nationwide and might have a retirement account, an individual life policy or a group life policy with an organization like Securian. So that's quite an amount of time just between three parties. And we anticipate that that would grow. But more importantly, when the first party pays, there's normally at least a 60 day on a median 180 day on an average day de delay between when the second party pays. So in order to make that much more streamlined beneficiary experience, you should share the data between the different carriers. And we built a solution to do that and also incentivize it using tokens. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sophia and Steve now to talk a little bit more about what they do and, and how they've worked with us. 
<laughs> Thanks, Pat. And uh, before we transition, I did want, I know one question we've been asked is, with COVID over the last year, how do you see the, this affecting some of the work you're doing around this digital transformation space with the insurers? That's a great question. I think that um, the, you know, the pandemic has certainly affected the insurance industry. Um, digital transformation was very important pre and post pandemic. For example, there was an organization in the insurance space called AM Best that was coming out within their credit rating agency coming out with an innovation rating. Um, so that was happening. I feel like it's undeniable that, you know, the pandemic and the associated policies afterwards um, have expedited some of the change. I mean, we've all been working from home. Um, so the pandemic response kind of led to declines in driving and many other areas that it affected insurance for sure. But moreover, the, the broad access to the internet, the work from home tools allowed insurance workers to work from home and maintain connection to company systems through cloud related services and other technologies that allowed for continuation of business and reasonable security. And for some companies, I think that really started to, you know, um, you know, really underscore the value in a digital roadmap, you know, but not only a data, you know, internal data policy, but also start to formulate what's your external data strategy. So for comp some companies, I think the digital roadmap was somewhat paused because of um, the pandemic. Um, but for others, I think it actually expedited the need, need to move forward and faster. And, um, you know, given the online automated environment that we were all um, operating within. So on net, I think, you know, the low interest rate environment which certainly affects insurers that traditionally, you know, invest in conservative assets um, leads even more so to a need for to lower operating costs within the industry in order to remain profitable. So all these different factors kind of coming to, to a head, I think has expedited in some ways some of the desire um, to, to move forward with a digital roadmap. And I think, you know, obviously one of the causal factors there was, was, the, was the pandemic. Yeah, and another one we actually got before this session was, you know, given you have over four years in this space and more than two dozen blockchain use cases, is there any advice you'd have for the Hyperledger audience? Um, I think that, you know, listening to the market is, uh, is very relevant for us. We've really tried to grade uh, use cases on desirability, feasibility, and viability and look into where use cases can work. Another thing that we've done internally is develop something we call Risk Stream Labs, which allows us to move through use cases and see if there's market interest, because it's really hard to know in advance before you start kind of working groups, how relevant the use case is going to be and what the potential ROI is. So what we've done instead is started a process to develop the applications utilizing very carefully a minimal amount of risk stream resources, product managers, project managers, and just get enough to see if the industry really wants to fund the use case development. And if they do want to fund that use case, case development, they're putting stake in the game and they're showing the, the value of what we could do next. And that's, I think, really helped us become more operationally efficient internally, but also focus on use cases that have likely the most bang for the buck for the industry players, because um, that's a big challenge is knowing where to start. There's lots of potential use cases for this technology and knowing where the, the areas that we really should focus on is, is a challenge. So that would be one area of advice that I would have for um, other consortia. Thanks, Pat. I think that's extremely helpful for people. Thanks for sharing. Um, I guess just transitioning to some of the technical lessons learned uh, we've worked across um, all industries with the leading blockchain networks and consortia. One common pattern we see is that people embark on a blockchain project, but about five to ten percent is the the actual blockchain. Uh, you know, the data on the chain, the logic on the chain, and it's a very important part of the solution. It's what provides a decentralization that a lot of the benefits people are looking for. But typical projects have up to 40 components um, on the off-chain stack and, you know, looking at the uh, apps and middleware layers. 
So when you're looking at really going to market with a blockchain solution, it's important to, to realize there's a full stack of technologies. And that's, you know, the blockchain's a beating heart. And you look at the data and the transactions happening, but there's also the um, middleware application, and then that the biz, the business operations, and then the DevOps as well. So Clyda was really built for this um, in mind uh, over almost four years ago, making looking at bringing these business networks together, making that radically simple and for enterprise. Pat mentioned um, some of the benefits to Ristream of that. We do work cross cloud and hybrid across multiple protocols, so wanted to, to, to let everyone know that. Pat, as Pat mentioned, that was important for their members because they're looking at a variety, you know, two dozen use cases across all of these you know, protocols and I want to provide that flexibility and choice so you can get to the right use case and the right of uh, the business value they're looking for. Looking at solving the problem of bringing consortia together really drove a certain uh, you know, data model, tenancy model, um, and a lot of choices from the ground up so you get all of those tools and uh, and that includes for network operators such as Riststream just that multi-party platform and providing a control plane data plane and where the members you know own their resources and and those are all private and isolated so um there's a variety of plug and play components you need, uh, you know, and the, the way the on and off chain um, pieces come together is extremely important. We've learned a lot. Uh, we've actually, as I mentioned in the intro, been in the enterprise blockchain space since the very beginning, 2015. So I've seen, you know, this second generation of blockchain projects coming through, such as the ones that uh, Riststream Collaborative is leading, and there's a lot of learnings in there for, for the community. Uh, with that, I'll pass to Steve, and he'll talk about some of the learnings and how that's translating to um, open source and some exciting news at Hyperledger. Thanks, Sophia. Um, you know, in, in tra transitioning, you know, at Clido, we, we have a deep commitment to open source communities. We, we think the end value for, for our customers is, is tremendous, and, and so we we, we've been very active over our entire existence, um, you know, in some of these awesome projects that are out there. And, and that spans across blockchain protocols, as well as some of the emerging off-chain technologies, you know, standards work around tokens and, and other things. I wanted to spend, you know, just the last couple of minutes um, to let you know that there's something really exciting that's being announced this week uh, at the Hyperledger Global Forum. And that's a, a new emerging uh, initiative called Firefly. And Sophia, if you move on, um, I believe it. I, I may be a little bit biased because uh, we're quite involved uh, in, in this new project, but we believe that, that Firefly really helps solve some missing pieces in the puzzle that, that have been really difficult um, you know, for some of the first movers and early adopters, Pat was talking about the journey that Risk Dream has been on in the insurance space, and that's multifaceted. There's the business side of it, but there's the technical side as well. Um, and, and the evolution of, of their technology stack um, and the value that that has for their members uh, on, on that. We, we, we see there's a certain amount of plumbing, right? For, the plumbing, for lack of a better term, that um, all blockchain networks need to build really as a side effect of trying to go build your use cases. And, and that plumbing exists around the chain. Sophia, you were talking about how, you know, those 40 components, most of them are not the blockchain. They're alongside, on top, sometimes underneath uh, of, of the blockchain. Um, things like getting events, triggering events and triggering actions and thinking about business processes that spans multiple parties. Um, and there's a trend, tremendous amount of, of plumbing to deliver data and events and messages reliably across party and also privately into your back office. And so Firefly is, is a new initiative, um, almost like a, a, a next generation approach that, that uh, you may have heard the term in the industry, a, a multi-party system, uh, but we, 
we see uh, Firefly sort of fulfilling this this larger goal of giving you something to build on that's not you know those low level blockchain a protocol type interfaces. It's a very simple API that spans across off chain and on chain components. And then there are a set of infrastructure runtimes that that again is, is broader than a, the blockchain itself that that are companion. Uh, to to the running blockchain, and so all of that together gives you a system uh, to to build upon that um, that takes a lot of that plumbing, that the nasty plumbing that's sort of almost like a dirty secret in in our space on the technical side, of, you know, an unforeseen challenge. Take that takes that off the table, um, and can it really accelerate um, you know building out of, of your use cases? If you if you go on again, Sophia, zooming in a little bit to the the Firefly node, and this this code is is out there it, in the Hyperledger uh, community, um, uh, and and you can go check it out yourself and, and sort of read up on on the docs. There's a lot of excitement um, about this project. I think folks have been talking about the gaps and the need for this for some time. We, we, we've heard from some of the the in fact, for some of the tech steering committee members of Hyperledger itself, that that was the case. But but looking quickly uh, under the hood, um, you know there there are a number of, of components that are designed in a micro microservice architecture. Um, very easy to to run infrastructure. Uh, you know, it sits on top of Kubernetes very nicely. Uh, it's organized into a core, which gives a clean a API to, to to build your application against. There's a second layer of, of connectors, uh, and the community is, is, is mobilizing around um, these connectors, and we're, we're starting to see um, even just, just launching this project uh, today publicly, we're already seeing folks coming forward interested in, in helping to contribute uh, connectors into their infrastructure runtimes. Um, of course, the blockchain node is an important infrastructure runtime. Uh, it's still there front and center, providing global ordering finality, a lot of the core values of a blockchain, but Firefly is sort of providing the, the larger piece. So if you want to learn more, um, there is, and I was just mentioning that, that Firefly is designed to be multi-protocol as well for that, that running a blockchain. Uh, so you can see uh, support across sort of the, the big three. Um, if you want to learn more about Firefly, I, I do want to, to say that you can, um, there's, there's an entire half day event on th this Friday. Um, and there, there's a link there where you can see the agenda. You can come, there's a hands-on lab, there's a tech overview where you can really go, go deep. Um, there's also a keynote that, that explains a bit more of the context and, and um, a backstory as well as the, the opportunity that Firefly presents for you. Uh, so, so it's really good. There's, there's something for, for everyone there. Um, you, can, you can get to it um, through the, the Hyperledger Global Forum webpage itself. I'm pasting up a, a link and you can, you can click through there. You know, participation is, is a part of the, the Global Forum itself, so, so you can join through seamlessly. There's also a direct URL that we have up on the screen here with, with the agenda. Really looking forward to um, any, any and all folks who can make it out. So with that, um, uh, I'll turn it back to Sophia for, for any last words or thoughts, Pat, as well. Uh, and want to thank everyone for, for attending. Um, well, I want to thank um, Pat and Steve. I know we did have a question. I think we have about maybe a minute left, um, if it makes sense to to answer some of the questions. So uh, Steve Eduardo asked, is Firefly an alternative to blockchain? Um, and, and then Lino, you were asking if Kaleido um, can provide a hybrid network out of the box or has accomplished the consulting. It is, um, for Lino's an easy one. Yes, you can create that out of the box. It's um, it's actual product. So if you go on and try, just go onto the Cloud website and you can get started there. We have a free trial. 
So Steve, on the Firefly question from Eduardo, is Firefly an alternative blockchain? Maybe we could spend uh, 20, 30 seconds on that and then wrap up. Yeah, real quickly on the hybrid, um, Clado is cross-cloud, so it's AWS Azure. Uh, you can natively create managed nodes there. And sometimes folks say hybrid, they mean that. Sometimes they mean a mix of SaaS nodes and self-managed nodes. Clido also has that through what we call private stack technology. So some members can run self-hosted node anywhere and securely connect in with the rest of the members that are hosted to SaaS. On, on, on Firefly, it's not an alternative to blockchain. So there is a blockchain uh, in the box. Uh, it's, we, we support, um, the, the intention is to support all of the big three, uh, but you do need to select as, as your bootstrapping config as you start up a Firefly node, you need to select a blockchain protocol. Um, and it, it's just there, it's, it's running. So the complexity of interacting with it uh, is abstracted away from you. And as Pat was saying, really interesting to some of the leading blockchain networks out there, the ability to either move from one protocol to the other is drastically simpler, um, but also the ability to have you know, multiple networks running side by side for different use cases um, implemented on, on, on different technologies. Uh, so it, Firefly relies on, on the blockchain for, for key integrity you know, elements of, of the data flows, and the data exchanges. It just brings along a lot of the, the plumbing that we see folks reinventing the wheel over and over again in the industry to do things like off-chain you know, private data exchanges, uh, messaging, event synchronization, and, and, and so on. Um, so it's it's that bigger system um, sort of sitting on top of, of, of a blockchain. Thanks, Steve. Well, a huge thanks to Pat. I think what you are doing um, leading with Ristream Collaborative is just a tremendous contribution to the, not just the insurance industry, but uh, leading the path of all blockchain consortia. So um, thanks, thanks. I know that's what you do every day. Thanks for coming to share some of the insights and, and your roadmap and plans. Well, we appreciate the, all the support your team's given us, and uh, we look forward to the uh, collective road ahead, I guess. So thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice. Bye.